Where the Wilderness Is, Chapter 2. I watched Mum pause to say hi and chat to our neighbours Jenny and Raj, while Bryn and Aria continued to discuss the safe. Money would be boring, Bryn says to Aria. I wonder it all be wet and rotten by now. I wonder if the safe's waterproof. It's pretty rusty, says Enzo. I bet we can get it open. Bryn grins and lifts the safe onto his lap. I knew we'd find real treasure. Can I try and open it? He asks, rattling the lock. One of the organisers passes us and frowns. You're not supposed to take the things you pick up. But it's all getting thrown away anyway, right? Replies Bryn. Yes, but it might be dangerous, she says. There's no way to know what might be inside. This only fuels Bryn and Arya's imaginations even more. Maybe it's an ancient scarab beetle, says Bryn. Or a mummy, says Arya. Can't fit a mummy in there, says Enzo. They've been learning about ancient Egypt at school. If you could, it was a mummified cat, replies Arya, crossing her arms. Or a hamster, says Bryn. Here's mum, I shout, as she approaches us, pushing her bike. What about this? If your mum says you can keep it, then it's fine, suggests the organiser. What on earth happened here, asks mum. She tucks at her muddy legs. We found a safe, says Bryn, tugging at her arm. Can we keep it? It's covered in dirt, she says. Do you really want it? We'll clean it, says Aria, giving Mum her best smile. Then I don't see why not, says Mum. It could be exciting. Yes, says Bryn, punching the air above him. Just then a news crew arrives and the organiser goes over to welcome them. We stand back and examine our treasure. One lock safe, three windlasses and an old shoe. I watch as the local news team films the drain canal and chats to the organiser. Hello, kids. Are you excited to see the canal emptied? We all nod le eagerly and she smiles. Do you mind if we interview Viv for the news? If they want to be, says Mum, looking at us. I say that I want to with the others. But when two cameras point at us, I suddenly feel self-conscious. Usually, I take every opportunity to talk about the canal and how proud I am to live on it. But now, all I can think of is people from school who might watch this and wonder if they'll think of me standing there, covered in mud and rubbish. I've been at my new school for almost two months, but still, the only person I'm friends with is Jasmine, and that's because we went to primary school together. And we only have English lessons together, so I don't see her that much. It's not like I tried to make friends, it's just that everybody already knows each other, and I'm not sure where I fit in. Thankfully, Aria points to our pile of treasure, starting with the shoe. Maybe people won't even notice me. Enzo models the windlasses, holding them on either side of his body. What's the most exciting thing you've found in the drained canal today? Asked the interviewer. <coughs> this safe, answers Bryn. It's really scratched up and it's locked, but maybe there's a diamond ring inside. Well, keep us updated if you get it open. I'm sure the viewers would love to see what's inside. We'll get it open, says Aria. Mum says we can teach ourselves to do anything if we work at it. The interviewer smiles at us. Very best of luck with that. She turns to the camera and talks to it as she walks off, wrapping up the news segment. How many numbers do you think the combinations? Asks Enzo. I bet it's six, I say. I've used a combination lock before for my locker at the gym and it was six numbers. Enzo thinks for a second. His green eyes focus on the path. If it's six, that means there are a million different combinations. A million, says Bryn, eyes wide with disbelief. How long will it take to try all of those? Enzo squeezes his eyes shut and thinks, how long does it take to count to a million? Let's say you can do one combination a second. That's one million seconds. It's about 278 hours, about 11 or 12 days if we work non-stop. That's forever, says Aria, stamping her foot. Mum laughs. I'm sure you'll find a way. Quick maths, Enzo. Bryn twists the combination on the safe. It squeaks and sticks, but the numbers eventually turn. He yanks the door. It doesn't budge. Let's get you comb and cleaned up before dark, says Mum. We strap the safe on the bike trailer Mum has brought with her. The twins used to ride in it when they were younger. Now we use the trailer to bring the fuel, shopping and wood, along with the canal to the boat. You can't reach us by car. Next, we slowly ride home together, stopping to pick up any litter that's still on the ground. Look at all this rubbish, says Mum, holding up a crisp packet and a cotton bud stick. 
at least we're getting rid of it, says Aria, reaching for Mum's hand to make her feel better. We're just moving it to landfill, says Mum, shaking her head. Almost all of the plastic ever created still exists somewhere in the world today. I smile sympathetically at Aria. There isn't much we can say to cheer Mum up when it comes to things like this. We know how much plastic frustrates her. The first time Mum tore the plastic wrapping off the vegetables at the supermarket checkout, I was mortified. She held up the queue for ages behind us. Later, after she calmed down, she explained that most plastic can only be used once and after it's thrown away, it adds to the tons of plastic waste that already exists. After that, every time we went shopping, I did it too. Until I started the new school. What if someone from my year saw me? What would they think? Out of the corner of the eye, my eye, sorry, I spoke, I oh. out of the corner of my eye, I spot a heron on the other side of the bank, poised and still, watching for a fish. Willow bounds ahead, splashing in the puddles, and the heron jolts at the noise, spreads its huge, wing, huge wings and flies off. The orange setting sun reflects in the ripples of the water. As we cycle along, I remember how, back in the spring, the hedgerow verges were covered in buttercups, blossom and cowslips. Now they look totally different, bursting with tufts of old man's beard, bright berries and prickly bangles. We pass a slightly shrunken carved pumpkin sitting on the roof of one of the boats left over from Halloween last week. I breathe in the cool air and taste the wood smoke, happy that it's Friday and I don't have to go back to school for two whole days.